All right, hello everyone, and welcome to Star Trek I-13. I know we've been off for a while, but we're finally back at it after a month break. And really, I don't really have much in the way of announcements, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the game with an opening log from our lovely Commander Saval. Chief Tactical Officer's Log, Stardate 520.06.7. Recent events aboard the I-13 have created a tense atmosphere among the crew. While I would normally dismiss such an issue as the emotional irrelevancy that it is, there has been a spike in verbal altercations and unauthorized fraternization. It is within my purview to intervene in the former, but the captain and first officer seem to accept that the latter is inevitable in wartime. Dr. Idru has tendered his resignation. However, the I-13 has not been able to turn him over to the Starfleet security for remand to the penal colony, from which he clearly should never have been removed. Instead, we have been diverted to the Badlands to search for a missing runabout, the Clarkson, which was investigating a repeating signal potentially sent from a surviving Maquis facility. Commander Talek is maintaining the e-warfare systems at peak efficiency, as Dominion vessels have been sighted in the area. On a personal note, while I remain convinced that my decision to terminate the Founder on our most recent away mission was the only logical course of action, Dr. Idru's insistence otherwise gives me pause. It is possible that my logic has been compromised, and the Founder may have proven a useful counterintelligence resource. I either prioritize the lives of the away team over the potential benefits to the Federation, or, in the moment, I failed to properly consider them. Either prospect is an indication that something may be seriously wrong. After my evening exercises, I will report to sickbay to discuss the matter further with Dr. Idru. End log. Alrighty. And sure enough, we are going to cut for our first scene to sickbay. And Idru, you being one of the only medical people on duty, even with you tender resignation, and feel free to correct me if this is not the case, but... I sort of imagine, based on what I know of Idru, is that he would still perform as a doctor. He just maybe wouldn't be taking orders. Would, would that be correct? Yeah, and I think he'd even go so far as to continue his protest by not being in uniform. Okay. So what is, uh, what is Idru wearing? Idru is wearing one of those delightfully awkward dress, like uh, attire, the delightfully awkward attire from TNG, where it's like a tight turtleneck and then like a vest over it that makes no sense whatsoever. But he is not wearing his comm badge, his rank insignia of any kind, or his uniform. Gotcha. Well, uh, Idru, you are perhaps performing some micro microcellular laboratory experiments when the door opens and in steps Commander Saval. Uh, so Saval walks into the room and you see that he is actually cradling his arm. Um, and he is not wearing his standard Starfleet uniform. Instead, it is a, a Starfleet uh, jumpsuit, like the ones we've seen on Voyager, wherein uh, the, uh, the Maquis are being trained and the like, so it's a, an exercise uniform. Um, he is not grimacing in pain, but you can see that he is, uh, has that sort of characteristic Vulcan reserve holding back the pain. And Andrew turns as the door opens. Uh, Mr. Saval. What can I do for you? You look like you've uh, had an accident. Uh, yes, Doctor. I'm afraid that uh, <clears throat> I, there was a slight incident in the ship's gymnasium, and uh, I may require your assistance. All right. I've still got some time. Why don't you uh, take a seat here in motions to one of the beds? Thank you, Doctor. And uh, he'll take a seat on the bed and proffer his clearly injured arm. And Idju grabs the medical tricorder, which is probably never far from his side, and begins to scan the damage. Hmm. If you want to roll me a uh, reason medicine, difficulty of zero. Focus in uh, surgery or emergency medicine or biology? I, you know, all of those could apply in some way. Hey, three momentum to start off with. Very nice. So yeah, uh, Soval, what's uh, what's going on with your arm there? Or would you like me to make something up? It's really just some uh, torn muscles uh, because, well, you can't necessarily tell the the uh, source or the origin of this injury, but uh, it seems like he's had some kind of accident in the ship's gymnasium. Fairly standard stuff. 
let's uh, let's flavor it this way. Um, maybe you were lifting uh, weights and you tore a ligament. I think I think that's a thing, right? Right, GM Josh, you're the actual doctor here. Yes. Yeah, you could you could overdo that, and that could happen uh, with a Vulcan. You'd I imagine you'd probably really have to overdo it. So yeah, let's let's actually flavor it that way. That yeah, you really overdid it, and you're just sort of uh, maintaining that Vulcan stoicism. Mm. Mr. Saval, would you like something for the pain? This will only take a moment. Uh, no, Doctor, that would be quite all right. Merely fix the injury. Okay, and I reach and grab a tool that I imagine does magic and heals this right away and start running it across Saval's arm. Mm. So what's next for the I-13, Commander? Well, Doctor, we are investigating a, uh, a potential surviving Maki colony or facility to see if we can either gain intelligence resources or rescue the Federation citizens still there, or former Federation citizens. A rescue mission that's not exactly in this uh, ship's wheelhouse. That'll be nice to see. I would disagree, Doctor. You may remember that we uh, saved Mr. Rostov, I believe it was. Or Rostov. Yes, and of course the uh, survivors on the planet where we had to violate orders to do that. I've I was trying to make a joke. I guess I didn't come across. No, Doctor. I believe that your sense of humor is uh, equivalent to mine. <clears throat> well, uh, first of all, I believe that this will do it. How does that feel? Much better, Doctor. Thank you. However, <clears throat> I believe that um, my injury may be a symptom of a much graver concern. Um, what would that be? The tricorder didn't give me any any signs. Uh, you may wish to run a uh, microcellular scan on my neural tissue. I believe that uh, an explanation for my accident will become clear. I think Idra will pause a moment before doing that scan. Now, Mr. Zavall, I've noticed signs of quite... Honestly, some some uh, interesting behavior, some handshakes, some uh, quick motions towards your phaser. Would this have anything to do with that? Uh, your supposition is correct, Doctor. And uh, I only discuss this with you because I am convinced that you hold the uh, principles of non-disclosure quite close to your heart. Of course. I think you know me well enough now to know that my principles are my key driving factor. Then, Doctor, I do hope that nothing that we discuss in this session will uh, make its way to the captain unless you deem it absolutely necessary to ensure the security of the ship. Well, the captain and I aren't exactly on good terms, so that's not really anything you have to worry about. Hmm. Well, I appreciate your discretion either way. So I have noticed certain, well, all this, this carries a bit of a misnomer with it, some psychotic behavior, typically around the, the handshakes, the uh, darting glances as you enter a room, lots of evidence of internal stress. Uh, before I do the scan, it would be, it'd be good to know a little bit more history if you feel comfortable sharing that. I think you misunderstand, Doctor. The condition that I am discussing is not psychological in nature. It is purely physiological. Um, if you simply run the scan, I think you will you'll see the source of my potentially aberrant behaviors. Okay, let's give it a shot. And then Idri will take the scanner part of his medical tricorder and start running the cross of all his head. And yeah, uh, no role required here. Uh, Saval, what is he seeing? Uh, you see that there is a kind of complex, almost bioneural set of circuitry in several places inside uh, Saval's brain, particularly those that are responsible for fine motor control and um, emotional control, so like the amygdala and the like. Um, and it seems as if as you scan or run deeper scans that uh, at the heart of each of these sort of uh, sets of neural webworks, 
uh, is a kind of pocket of deterioration or degradation as the neural tissue is beginning to decay away. This is rather fascinating, Mr. Saval. I don't think I've ever seen an implant of this nature. Uh, nor would you, Doctor. It is not entirely sanctioned by the Federation. However, Starfleet Intelligence uh, had an experiment that they wished to conduct. Well, I certainly condone taking whatever measures are required to save a patient's life. I am a little hesitant when it comes to this level of, uh, well, ingenuity, I guess. Have you suffered any side effects as a Vulcan, especially your brain physiology is uh, very delicate. Doctor, I believe you've seen numerous side effects. Um, my regular routine of meditation has proven less effective at maintaining my emotional control. And I believe that a number of the incidents, including my accidental uh, assault against Commander Talek during the last away mission, when he was caught within my field of fire, may be attributable to the damage that is likely being caused by these implants. So give me a little history here, Mr. Saval. Are these implants required for some reason? Yes, Doctor. You may have noticed that I am <clears throat> scarred, and he points towards the extensive scarring on his forehead and the sort of groove in the flesh that remains. Um, were it not for these implants and the experimental procedure that I underwent, it is likely that I would not be, well, I would certainly not be serving in Starfleet, and it is likely that I would not be ambulatory. So this implant is designed to replace some level of functionality inside of your psychology that has been damaged, I take it? Yes, Doctor. It is also, when properly attuned and employed judiciously, capable of granting me momentary bursts of exceptional accuracy or improving my hand-eye coordination. Unfortunately, due to the dictates of the war, I have been forced to rely upon it more often than I think is wise. Well, Mr. Saval, what would you like me to do here? Is there any way for you to forestall continued degradation of the neural tissue? Or at least repair some of the damage? At a cursory glance, I would say the best thing for you is to remove this implant and undergo a procedure that would repair the tissue. Of course, there would be a recovery period. You may never recover the functions that, you're, that you had before. And of course, whatever functions this implant gives you would also not be available. Uh, it seems as though you're suffering a bit of side effects from this implant. And if I could be honest, when it comes to manipulating the brain of someone, especially a complex creature like a Vulcan, it's it's very tricky work. And in your case, I think we're seeing evidence that that work was not done uh, with 100% of proficiency. Well, Doctor, I am not an expert in the technology that was employed to create these implants. I believe they were derived from the same kind of bioneural circuitry that is being uh, implemented in new Starfleet uh, ship designs. Nonetheless, I, I cannot leave my duties at this juncture unless it becomes evident that I am a danger to this ship. Well, Mr. Zavall, if you had my personal opinion, I believe that your judgment has been impaired on numerous occasions. Uh, I could easily make the argument that you are unfit for duty. Hmm. I do not agree with you, Doctor, and I am unwilling to rob this vessel of its tactical officer at a, in a time of war. Seeing as how I'm no longer the acting chief medical officer anyway, it's not exactly in my purview. And to be honest, if I made the recommendation to the captain, I doubt he'd take it seriously. But Mr. Saval, I think you should ask yourself the question, is it better to be relieved of duty or to be at your post with potential homicidal activities beyond your control? Doctor, I don't believe I've ever engaged in any form of homicidal behavior. Well, apart from the founder that you murdered. 
The dividing line between murder and killing, Doctor, is a fairly distinct one, and I have no concerns regarding the necessity of my actions on the recent away mission. You see, Doctor, what you have to understand about me is that I am willing to do whatever is necessary to ensure the survival of my shipmates and to ensure the success of our mission. If that means that I need to take another being's life, I will do that. If that means that I have to sacrifice my own life to do so, I will. It is the very reason I had these implant implants installed. Well, in that, if that's the case, I would say they're functioning adequately. You seem to be very functional and capable of uh, causing harm on other creatures. Are you refusing to affect any kind of treatment, Doctor? Is there truly nothing that can be done? Mr. Saval, I'm not going to treat the symptoms of this problem for you because I believe to continue to do so would be unethical. Now, I can cure this problem for you, but it won't give you the outcome that you're looking for. Hmm. It seems then, Doctor, you are willing to imperil the lives of everyone on this ship simply because of your fit of moral peak. Well, I'd like to see it as I'm protecting the lives of everyone on this ship. Doctor, your capacity for self-delusion is truly impressive. Thank you, Commander. I'll take that as a compliment. Hmm. Very well then, Doctor. If you are unwilling to provide me the assistance that would be necessary to secure the lives of the members of this crew, I am actually not surprised. Given that you will be leaving the Federation without one capable doctor, condemning innumerable people to death because you are not present, I can understand why you would act in the same way now. Well, let's make a compromise, shall we? And Idrew goes over to a, a cabinet. Here's a device that will monitor your neural functions. Now, it will be visible, so anyone on the bridge will know. But it will sound an alarm if your brain physiology begins to spike in an unhealthy way. Doctor, I don't believe that's a compromise at all. I appreciate that, and I believe that it is a logical course of action. Again, Commander, I would strongly suggest that you have this implant removed as something very critical to your long-term health. If you decide to ignore my suggestion, you're also ignoring my treatment. But again, that's your choice. Now, if that leads you to condemn me as a criminal of the Federation, then you wouldn't be the first. Doctor, I'm not condemning you as a criminal. I'm condemning you for your unwillingness to do what is necessary to save the lives or safeguard the lives of the officers on this ship and throughout the Federation. Your decision to leave Starfleet is eminently selfish and morally condemnable. Well, we'll just have to agree to disagree, Commander, because I believe sticking to my morals is the uh, is actually the most sound way for me to protest the things that have happened on this vessel that I don't agree with. I don't believe that the way forward is to kill everyone in front of us. I will leave you this, with this one question, Doctor, and he will uh, allow you to uh, install the implant, the monitoring device on his temple or wherever it might be placed. What would you be willing to give up to save the life of a patient? What would you be willing to do to save the life of a patient? Well, Commander, I've made that decision already. I've, in fact, the jail that you're delivering to me to is the punishment that I'm accepting for doing whatever it took to save patients. I believe the life of, a, of all sentient beings are equal and should be equally pursued uh, as far as their safety. I don't think any being should be sacrificed for the well-being of another. I also don't believe in this situation where that is inevitable. Now, my father and, and those like yourself have told me throughout my entire life that situations will arise where someone has to be sacrificed for someone else, and I reject that situation. In fact, I think it's very cowardly. Hmm. Let me ask you this then, Doctor. Would you be willing to sacrifice your own moral principles to save the life of a patient? In other words, you believe that you have a moral responsibility to leave the, the Starfleet in protest. 
in doing so, undoubtedly, you will deprive the Federation of a doctor. You will deprive men and women who will die because of a lack of a doctor of someone who could save their lives. Are you placing your own set of moral beliefs and your indignation ahead of the lives of the people who will die because you are not here? It's an interesting supposition, Commander. However, it's a theory that could be argued to the infinite. I am a believer of what is in front of me. And what I can do right now is object the way the captain and his crew are handling the situation here in the war. In fact, I just won't be a part of it. Now, we could argue about prime directives and what we might do might affect certain people. But what I care about are the lives in front of me right now. Then, Doctor, we returned to my earlier critique. If you believe for a moment that the lack of a capable and competent doctor in this war will not result in the deaths of Starfleet officers, then you truly do have an impressive capability for self-delusion. All in an effort to absolve yourself of the guilt that you should feel, given that you are subject to such emotions, over condemning people to death. Frankly, Commander, I would stay on this ship if I felt you needed a doctor. But if this vessel continues on its path, you're not going to need a doctor. You're going to need a coroner. Hmm. Unlike you, Doctor, I'm willing to make that sacrifice if it means protecting the lives on this ship. And it's I just think... about then that there is a chime over the PA system that calls for uh, everyone to report to the bridge. Well, Doctor. Commander, after you. Of course. And so Val will make his way to the bridge. So uh, this is a Brad question. Brad, would that order to bring everyone to the bridge uh, also include Dr. Idru, or are you truly just sort of keeping them off duty? No, I don't think so. I, no, I mean, it would. He would, uh, he would definitely be included. Okay. Would Idru go? guess, did the call come with, like, a red alert or anything like that? No, no red alert. Just, hey, report to the bridge. Uh, probably not, since he's relieved himself. Okay. All right. Then we will slip ahead to the bridge. And, uh, you know, as Saval, as you come in, uh, Telek, uh, Strawn, and Holton, and Tari are all already there. And uh, what you're seeing on the view screen is, of course, the turbulent plasmatic, plasmatic, there's a new word, uh, plasmatic uh, energies of the Badlands, uh, sort of that orange swirling vortex of just turbulent energy. And in particular, uh, Holton uh, zooms in the view screen uh, to what appears to be a Almost a, a Pluto-sized planet, but obviously big enough to be a planet. Rest in peace, Pluto. Um, and says, well, sir, uh, this is uh, what I found. Uh, running scans now, but uh, I would appreciate if uh, Mr. Telek or Mr. Saval could uh, back me up here. I'll do so. Okay. Uh, so, Telek, uh, I would like you to roll me, let's call this a reason and a science. Uh, you would not have a focus, uh, but the I-13 will assist you with a sensor science. And the difficulty on this, after accounting for advanced sensor suites, will be a 1. All right, so that's already two successes. Uh, can someone get the I-13? Again, that is uh, sensor science for the ship. Okay, I got it. Uh, sensors and science. Is the difficulty lowered because of our sensor suite? Yeah, yeah. I already included that. All right, so uh, three successes, which means you get two momentum. So, uh, Telek, I'm going to give you access to a handout. As soon as I find you, of course. There you are. All right. You should now have access to a handout about the planetoid you are seeing. Okay. So, I have some information on this planet. Uh, it seems to be Class M. Barely Class M. 
It has no oceans. There is non-sentient life and water around the equatorial range, but not much of it. And there are massive deposits of minerals, valuable and rare. Um, and it looks like, unfortunately, those minerals will interfere with transporter operation. So we might have to take a ship down there rather than transport down. Is there any sense of where this Maki, Maki colony is on this planet? I would say if you give me a momentum, I will answer that question. Please answer yeah. the question. All right. Also, Nick, I think we're at uh, four momentum total right now. Um, but yeah, uh, the answer is you are not seeing a sign of the Maki colony. Well, let me back up. So you're still seeing a repeating signal coming from the planet. Um, probably the same one that the Clarkson was looking for. Um, but you're also seeing two Starfleet comm badges. Uh, the signals for them are pinging back very faintly, but they are pinging back all the same. The caveat to that is you are not seeing a runabout. Hmm. Is there any way for us to tell if those... Com badges have been there for a while, or are they relatively new? I would say uh, not from orbit, unfortunately. Okay. Well, it looks like we have a, a good place to start our search. Um, let's put together a team and uh, get down there. All right. So there's actually a few ways you guys can go about this because uh, it's been a while. I thought I'd you know remind everyone of what of our options are. So, of course, transporting is an option. Uh, as Talek said, it would just be difficult. Uh, you could take a shuttle. Uh, you could take the Wave Rider. Um, you could also, because you are a Nova class, you could land the I-13 on the planet itself as well. I don't like that idea that much, um, especially since we can probably use the I-13 as an advanced warning system in case Maki or uh, not Maki uh, Dominion ships do enter the area. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we we will be taking a uh, a shuttle. Okay. And, and some... uh... oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, Ensign Tori would spin around in his chair and say, uh, come on, Captain, don't you want to take the Bodhi out? I mean, that Wave Rider is built for exactly this sort of thing, right? Eh? Sorry, there's a phone ringing. One sec. <laughs> like, I'm not hearing a no, Captain. Uh... <laughs> uh, I think there's something wrong with the controls of that thing. Hey, well, you know, I'm I'm the guy to take a look at it, right? <laughs> uh, right. All right, let's take the wave runner, and we will uh, begin our search at those com badges. Mm, yeah. Okay. Right, so, who's going on this away mission exactly? I'm guessing Tari really wants to go. Oh yes, he's on the edge of his seat. All right, so we got Tari. Um, I think I will stay on the ship and I will send, um, I will, uh, we, we do need a security officer, probably mm -hmm. more than one. I will go as, uh, Mr. Vron and okay. he will be the, one of the muscles. Um, but I think we need, uh, we need at least one scientist and we probably need the doctor in case there are, uh, wounded people. All right. Well, uh, let's play that out a little bit, because uh, I, I imagine you're going to have to convince uh, Idru to come along. So I will, uh, I'll tap my communicator and say, uh, bridge to Doc, bridge to Dr. Idru. After a moment, you hear, hello, bridge. This is Idru. How are you enjoying your time in the, uh, in sick bay? I'm doing well, actually. I've got a few Earth martinis made up. 
about to play some music and uh yeah start packing my things sounds fantastic um well i'm sorry to bother you but i believe we have uh we have a matter here where your services may be needed not only are we searching for a maquis colony but it appears there may be starfleet personnel on this planet and they may be injured so i'd like you to be a part of the away team Okay, Captain, I'll report to the transporter room. My only caveat is, uh, if you could order Mr. Saval, let's talk to someone before we shoot them. That's my only request. I turn to Mr. Saval. Uh, Mr. Saval, do you think you can uh, go along with that request? Well, Captain, as I intend to remain at the tactical station on board the I-13, I don't believe that the doctor has anything to be concerned about, as irrational as his fears might be. Doctor, what do you think? Well, I can uh, certainly have a sigh of relief knowing Mr. Saval will be far away from anyone that uh, might require assistance, so I think that further motivates me to go on this mission. Thank you, Captain. Think of it as a vacation. Sure. Well, th thank you, uh, Doctor, and uh, the team will meet you at the Wave Runner. So my I'll only question is, uh, is Talek coming along, or Nick, are you going to run someone else? Um, I'm going to have Talek coming along. I just wanted everybody to finish what they were doing first. Okay. I asked because I think that technically puts Talek in command. All right. So no, we're going to believe so, yeah. Let's, uh, let's cut to the Wave Rider. And yeah, you all get situated in the Wave Rider. Of course, it is that sort of fancy shuttle we see on the underside of the uh, Nova classes. And uh, once you all get situated, the airlock sealed, atmosphere pressurized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and Centauri, I would like you to roll me a control and a con. And actually, it could either be daring or control plus con. And the Wave Rider should be assisting you with a Engines Con. And I'm going to say that, based on the conditions of the Badlands, that this is a difficulty of three to get down to the planet safely. Okay. Uh, I would just say that as he gets into the ship, he would actually do one of those little Riker maneuvers over the chair into the, <laughs> uh, uh, the Con chair. And he would... Go through, he would ignore the plea fright, plea fright checks completely until mm -hmm. he sort of stops, pauses, and puts his hand on the, the dashboard and strokes it for a minute. And he says, I know, baby, I'm sorry. I know, I know you've been hurt before. I'm not like that other guy. It's okay. You're all right. Okay. I have such an important question. Sorry to interrupt. Does Tori actually step over the chair or fly over the chair? It's, you know, you're not sure. He takes a leaping bound over it. Uh, so, because this is an activation, can I increase one of his uh, attributes or one of his disciplines, rather? Yeah, you could uh, upgrade an attribute. You could upgrade a discipline. You could give him a value. Uh, it could give him another focus. could also give him a talent. All right. I'll bump Khan up to five. Okay. And would his precision maneuvering... Uh, reduce the difficulty of a task by one to a minimum of zero when attempting a task that requires precision maneuvering or when there's a collision risk. Would that apply? Yeah, that would definitely apply. So the difficulty is now a two. Okay. So I'll do Daring Con uh, and I'll buy an extra die for 3d20. Okay. And I've got the uh, ship. All right. Well, there's uh, three successes from Tari and one from the Bodhi. So that's four successes. You get two momentum. Yeah, so Tari, uh, this is uh, actually rather much like flying the I-13. Uh, you are able to not only get away from the I-13 without any, shall we say, paint scratches, but you actually make your journey down to the planet um, rather, I wouldn't say sedate, but at least pleasant. You know, there's a minimal, minimal amount of uh, buffering going on, maybe a little bit of shaking, but nothing that the inertial dampers can't handle. And we're going to cut ahead just a little bit with you landing on the surface of this planet. 
Now, I have an important question to ask, and that is, uh, where are you landing in relation to the comm badges? So, uh, Commander, you want me to sit down right on the comm badges, or somewhere else for some reason? I mean, maybe not directly above it, maybe... Uh couple of meters away well you know i was thinking i was just gonna like land right on them and crush them just save the docs some work but hey well uh, you know you can never be too careful okay good right sure uh so i will come in relatively close to the uh the comm badges within let's say 100 meters okay so you set the wave rider down and uh, my question is, once the Wave Rider has uh, more or less settled on the planet's surface, um, what's the procedure from here? Are you going to attempt to hit the communicators with a, with a you know, like a tap your comment and say, hey, whoever you are, respond. Are you going to step out? Like, what are you, what are you uh, going from here? I was thinking we would just head out and see if we can see anybody. Okay. All right, let me quickly check talents here uh, because there's a certain one I'm looking for that would change how this unfolds. All right, so Idru doesn't have it. I think this is the first time we've used Vron. Uh, no, he's got a talent. So I guess this is an activation for Vron if you want to give them a talent or a focus, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, I'm, looking, I'm looking through the book right now, but... Uh... Just, just go with what he has for now. It's it's on a... Okay. Also, apparently I need to upgrade uh, Tari's uh, token because he now has aviator shades on his sheet. <laughs> I love it. All right. Uh, I'm not seeing the talent I'm looking for here. So what's going to happen is uh, we'll say uh, Vron is security. You're first out of the door and you're looking around and it is a desert surface almost. It's very rocky, very bland, very brown. Uh, wind out of the southwest. Uh, and as you maybe start to give the all clear, uh, what happens is from one of the sort of hilly mountainsides around you, um, a disruptor blast fires out and hits the side of the wave rider right next to where your head was a few seconds ago. Oh. We should fall back. Maybe raise shields. And yeah, uh, I would say at this point we will move into initiative order. Um, but uh, let me also put the wave rider actually on the uh, the map here so that we have it in case the wave rider uh, is needed. So we'll put the Bodhi down. All right. So, uh, it is the player's turn to act first. Uh, what would your response be at this point? Before I do anything, is that coming from the direction where the comm badges are? Yes. So, Telek is going to basically pull everybody back in mm -hmm. to the ship and close the door. Um... Okay, so going out there was a bad idea. Somebody get on the communicator and try to contact the comm badges rather than trying to locate them visually. Anybody can do that. I, I'm just going to go get the shields up. Okay. Uh, right. That's also good to do. And Andrew is going to head to the sensor console and actually start with a scan of the area using the Wave Rider sensors. Sure. So, Idru, if you want to give me a uh, reason science difficulty of two. Sensor operations focus? Oh, yeah. And I would say the uh, Bodhi could assist you with its own sensor science. Anyone mind if I, I use a I momentum for one. an extra dice? Do it. You guys are rolling hot today. I love it. 
So that's uh, five successes, which means I believe you are capped on momentum and you have two floating. Um, So what you see, Mr. Idru, is you are seeing that there are Jem'Hadar life signs around the comm badge. Uh, Specifically, that there is about four of the Jem'Hadar. And they are arrayed in such a fashion around the comm badge that it wouldn't have mattered uh, which direction you came from. You would still encounter them. So I got four floating momentum, I think. Could I use one of those momentum to ask a question about other life signs apart from Jimadar? Do we know of anyone else in the area? Uh, I would say that you get a very fleeting um, ping to the southeast, uh, approximately three clicks away. But it's very, like, it's there one moment and it's gone the next. And what I would say with that same momentum spend is that the direction of the repeating signal is also from the southeast. Uh, so, Doc, uh, you, you seeing anything out there or uh, or what? Looks like it's just Jim Hedora. I don't see anyone that we're here to, that we could rescue. And in fact... I'm piping in some coordinates to you right now, Ensign. I think this might actually be our better shot for looking for survivors. And I'd like to create an advantage, perhaps, with that sensor scan. Uh, since since I have three momentum left, uh, I'm going to use two momentum to make an advantage that perhaps when we leave, we won't be detected by anyone. So sort of a uh, a stealth exit, if you will. Yeah, a stealth exit. And then the last momentum, if anyone has a question, I'm kind of out of ideas. Do we pick up, uh, shit. I know that the Geminar transporters are pretty advanced. Mm -hmm. Is there any sign that they are preparing to transport onto our ship? I would say no, there is no danger of that. Uh, mostly because you are not seeing a vessel on your scans and you do sort of need a vessel to do the transport. It's not like Jet Manar can just personally transport anywhere. Okay. Commander, I recommend we leave the area at once. Yeah, I, I can take us out low. I mean, uh, they wouldn't even see us going. Great. Make it so. Uh, yes, sir. I always and wanted Mr. to say Mr. that. Mr. Talik, I think I've created enough noise on the sensors that I don't think anyone's going to be able to, to, to detect us, at least not right away. Well, we can regroup and figure out what to do from there. All right. Well, uh, as you uh, bring the Bodhi up and fly towards the repeating signal, there's, of course, a few uh, blasts from the Jem'Hadar disruptors. Uh, as they fire pretty much fruitlessly at the Bodhi. But uh, there's a huge difference between uh, handheld energy weapons and a Wave Rider's shields. So basically, you guys fly away uh, towards the signal. And this time, uh, you actually see something out of the uh, front view window. And what you're seeing is that there is some form of a settlement uh on this planet and you missed it at first from orbit for several reasons um the first is that it's almost set up in a camouflaged fashion um i don't know if any of you are uh, big into military stuff but they have sort of those desert camo nets that sort of obscure buildings and uh, other facilities uh over them all and they're also sort of nestled into an overhang. So it was one of those things that had you not known where to go, you would have missed this entirely. Um, and as you get closer, uh, what you notice is that there are uh, a few people walking around. Uh, again, in sort of a desert camo or a uh, blend-in sort of bit of clothing. Uh, but what you're seeing is it's not just humans out there. Uh, you're seeing a few Romulans. You're seeing... Uh, maybe even a Klingon out there. But the one universal constant is when they see you coming towards the settlement, uh, they rush for building cover, uh, basically to get out of the way of what they might see as an invading force. 
So what would you like to do from there? Uh, so you want me to like broadcast something over to them? I mean, they seem kind of scared, which is weird for Klingons and also weird because there are Romulans there too. And that usually doesn't happen unless they're killing each other. But anyways, what do you want, Commander? I mean, I just find somewhere where we can park and then we can see about getting in contact with the people here. Uh, like outside the city or yep. like I, can, I can set it. Okay, good. All right, great. Uh, you don't so, have to set it in the middle of the city. I feel like that'll cause more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, but I mean, I kind of want to do that because like, they see that little that little nook right you, there. You, I, can, you I can just set us down, to. right? Okay. All right, fine. Uh, I will land us a reasonable distance, maybe another 100 meters outside of the uh, the city or the little encampment. So uh, unlike the first time when you stepped out of the wave rider, oh, we lost somebody. I think we lost the captain. Uh, we'll give him a moment. Let's see if it was just a uh, misclick. Yep, there he is. All right. So this time as you... Uh... Oh, captain, you are lit up, but we cannot hear you. What? Oh, we can hear you now. Good. All right, sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, as you step out of the Bodhi this time, uh, there is no no phaser fire, no disruptor fire, so no worries there. Um, but what you are seeing is that there is someone approaching you with what looks to be a Batleth of all things. A human male um, looks to be in his late 40s, so he's kind of graying at the temple. Um, actually seems pretty, pretty fit for a 40-year-old uh, late 40s human. Um, bit of musculature to him. Uh, he's wearing what is essentially a tank top and some form of a jean. Um, but he stops a, a good distance away and says, So, uh, Starfleet, eh? What brings you here? I think he's talking to you, Commander. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, I am Commander Telek from the the I thirteen of the Federation. We just um, are visiting to see if you need any assistance down here. And the gentleman sort of cocks his head to the side a little bit in a questioning fashion and says, "No, we don't really need anything in the way of assistance, uh, though there are some." shall we say, refugees that we've taken in that might wish to go with you? I think that counts as help. Uh, would you introduce us to them if you know where they are right now? Well, most everyone's hiding indoors. We did. Uh, we were visited by a Jem'Hadar strike force a few days ago, but we drove them back and we had assumed that either they were regrouping or otherwise were leaving us alone uh sure come with me into the settlement and yeah they, they attacked us on the way in oh well that's good news anyway this way please and uh he turns and sort of motions for you to follow him okay everybody on your best behavior hey i got and nothing we'll else my phase is set to stun Maybe phaser is set to away. <laughs> All right. I can do that, Commander. All right. So before we do that scene, we're actually going to cut back to the bridge of the I-13. And the reason for that is uh, Saval. Uh, you've been sort of monitoring the away team, and communications have been spotty at best. Um, but in your sort of scans of the planet and scans of the surrounding vest or surrounding area, uh, what you're noticing actually is there is a very faint, almost negligible warp signature leading away from the planet. Captain, I believe that I've detected a warp field or a warps trail leading away from the planet. Can you get a fix on it? I will try to uh, triangulate the course. Um, 
so could I take a scan of it to see where it's going or what might be along that trajectory? And while I'm doing so, can I determine the kind of vessel that produced it? Was it like a runabout or a much larger vessel, Dominion, etc.? All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a reason security. Uh, the I-13 will assist you with a sensors security. Uh, I say with advanced sensors in play uh, that your overall difficulty will be a Let's do a four. Okay. Um, would helm operations apply, given that this is sort of like tracing a course or shipboard tactical systems? Let me take a look at your focuses here. Let's see. Nope, that's it, Drew. All right. Uh, I'll give you shipboard tactical. Okay. The power systems of security. Uh, I will buy two extra dice for 4d20. Okay. And the ship is assisting with sensor science, was it? Sensor security. Sensor security. Yeah, I got the ship up. Wow, that is uh, seven successes overall. So you actually get three momentum. You're back at cap. Uh, yeah, so Saval, what you're seeing is actually two warp signatures. There is what appears to be the signature of your missing runabout leading deeper into the Badlands. There's also what appears to be uh, a Jem'Hadar attack fighter that is headed on the same course. Um, but with that many successes, what I would also tell you is that the warp signature of the runabout is almost gone, whereas the Jem'Hadar one is more recent. Captain, it seems that the missing runabout may have headed off in this direction, only to be trailed much later by a Jemadar attack ship. Hmm. Can we get into contact with the uh, with the away team? And Holton sort of taps the thing and says, uh, spotty channel, sir, a bit of static, but yeah, I should be able to get you a line. Tell them that we're going to go after this signal. If that runabout had Federation people on it still, we we owe it to them to, to go after them. Hi, sir. I trust the commander can watch, can uh, look after herself, uh, sorry, himself for, uh, for a little while without our supervision. And then uh, we're going to say, uh, for sake of argument, that Telek, you do get this message. Uh, is there anything you'd like to say back to the captain? And if anything goes wrong down here, we are to... There are some Hi. gem hubbar down here. Or there were, at least. <laughs> uh, do your best to uh, stay out of trouble, Commander, and uh, if worse comes to worse... Get into orbit, and uh, we'll meet. We won't be long. Understood. Can do. All right. So, uh, focusing still on the ship, we see the ship sort of pulling away from this planet and moving deeper into the Badlands. And what you're seeing is that uh, the storms of the Badlands are growing increasingly turbulent. And the good news, though is that you are seeing both on visual and on sensors and don't worry about this map i'm just putting you here because i want to show distances um you are indeed seeing your missing runabout uh drifting without power uh pretty much right off of your uh right off your bow captain uh -huh. I recommend extreme caution. The Jemadar are known to use traps such as this. Yes, Commander. Let's uh, let's raise shields, and let's make sure our people are on that ship before we approach. Uh, Commander Holton, can you get into contact with the Clarkson? She, uh, of course, presses a few buttons, tries to hail them, and eventually reports. Uh, Sir, I'm not getting a reply. Uh, however, I can tell you there are... Eight life forms aboard, all human. Uh, however, sir, if I read this correctly, 
their life support is failing. They maybe have 30 minutes, if that. Can we get a transporter lock? Unfortunately, not uh, one that is very positive, sir. I could still attempt to transport them anyway, but there would be considerable risk. What about a tractor beam to get, and we could pull them out of this area? Do you think? Do we think we could do that in time? That would be entirely dependent on uh, Mr. Silval, I believe. It is possible, Captain. It would be difficult given the uh, plasma interference and the uh, uh, ion storms in this region. Any signs of the Dominion vessel? Not as of yet, Captain. All right, uh, let's let's get closer to the Clarkson and attempt to apply a tractor beam. Um, on a meta level, before we do that, um, what do you think about possibly spending two momentum to create an advantage whereby we send out a series of probes to, I, I guess, scan the surrounding area, give us an advanced warning system? Create some sort of tachyon net that any ship would have to fly through? What do you think, uh, ELH? Would that be possible, or...? Yeah, I would say that that could be something you could do. Do it, Commander. Very good, Captain. All right. So, the I-13 moves closer. And uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, a tractor beam is a control security. And the ship will assist you with a structure security. Uh, normally, it would be a difficulty of two. However, uh, the Badlands are at play here. So I would say this is a difficulty of four. But the good is news this... is Shipboard Tactical will apply here. Okay. Is this a sensor's task? Unfortunately, no. This is structure and security. So no help from the sensors here. And it was control security on my part? Correct. So I'll use augmented ability control. Okay. And uh, buy two dice, if that's okay with everyone. Thank you for it. So. We have it, so use it. Hey, there's four successes already. So you get the four you need. And yeah, the uh, underside of the I-13, uh, the tractor beam emitter emits sort of that blue conical shape over the, the Clarkson. And my question is, do you pull them sort of like in a tug fashion? Do you bring them into your shields? Uh, what do you do from this point? That's actually what I was going to suggest uh, next. Uh, Commander, can we br safely bring the Clarkson within our shield bubble? before we uh, leave this area? We could, Captain. My concern would be that the vessel may be booby-trapped in some way. If they're carrying some kind of undetected explosive device, we could be bringing them in to our own destruction. Fair enough. Let's, uh, let's pull them behind us and at maximum possible speed uh, get out of this area of space. Yes, sir. And uh, it's a good thing you have your early warning because, sure enough, as you start to pull away and take the Clarkson with you, uh, at the very edge of one of your uh, probe networks, as it were, uh, you are in fact detecting that there is a Jem'Hadar ship uh, headed in your direction. And we are actually now going to go back to the planet, where at this point... Well, as soon as Rule 20 decides to move maps. Where uh, at this point, uh, Tari, Telek, Vron, Idru, uh, you've been brought into the settlement. And uh, to borrow from Star Wars, I know we're crossing the streams. Uh, imagine sort of like Tatooine in, style, in the style of buildings where uh, they're made out of stone or compressed sand. Uh, not very tall buildings, maybe a two-story building here or there. Um, but as you come into the settlement... 
what strikes you again is odd is that it's not just humans or Klingons or Romulans. You're also you're basically seeing a microcosm of almost all Federation species. And uh, your guide, who has yet to introduce themselves, uh, sort of takes you into the middle of this and says, Well, uh, here we are. Ain't much, but uh, it's what we call home. Uh, real quick, Saval asked, uh, do we get a momentum due to augmented ability control? Oh, yes, you do. Thank you for catching that. I always I, forget I also... It. I have one other question. The tractor beam, does that take uh, power? I believe it does, yes. Okay. I was trying to control F on the rule book and it was just not cooperating with me. Yeah, it's it's very finicky. Anyway, jumping back down to where we are. Mm -hmm. Hello, I am Commander Telek from the USS I-13. I heard that there may be some refugees who are looking to get back to the Federation. And uh, your guide turns around and says, Ah, well, uh, I am uh, former Captain Hawking of the USS Norway. Was that like former. the first ship of that class? Because that's really cool if it was. Like the, the first Norway? Yeah, we were uh, fresh out of Stardock when we were told to uh, more or less evacuate a Maquis colony in this area. Uh, it was hard finding them, let me tell you what. But uh, long story short, uh, the ship went down and our chief engineer wasn't able to get us back up. So that's kind of why we've been here. Any motions around at the settlement? Have you just been living here for so long? Have you put out any distress signals? Well, I mean, obviously we found something, so uh, we are happy to bring you back. Well, since you, you are here, uh, I only can assume that our emergency transporter or transponder has finally borne fruit. But uh, tell me, uh, how large is your vessel exactly? I'll be honest, not that large, but we can see what we can do. Hmm. I have about 139 people that uh, would potentially like to return to the Federation. Could your ship accommodate that? That's about four times as many people as we have. But we could probably get some more ships to come out and pick you guys up as well as taking some of you ourselves. And you My, called yourself former captain. Could you elaborate on that? Well, I no longer have a ship to command. But is it safe to assume everyone would like to leave this planet? No, there are some actual Maquis, the ones that were here before us, that would like to remain hidden away, as it were. Uh, but there's also members of my crew that uh, have sort of taken to this frontier lifestyle. Uh, ain't uh, that illegal? Sorry, I, I'm just saying, like, you're leaving in the middle of a war kind of thing. That that seems, I don't know. And uh, Hawking nods and says, Yes, uh... I believe some people have what you would say deserted, but those of us who wish to return to the Federation are more than happy to redon our uniforms. Uh, Captain uh, Hawking, I have a, uh, a different question for you. How often have you experienced contact with the Jim Hadar? Uh, just the one incident uh, when they tried to come into the settlement, but other than that, uh, not much. Does this settlement have any kind of uh, sensors? Uh, we have those that we scavenge from the Norway, yes. We encountered the Jemadar. Uh, they seem to have set a trap using Federation combat edges. 
Does that sound familiar? I believe that... And he thinks for a moment. So, were you the ones who sent the runabout last week? No. Huh. Seems like they might have been here longer than you thought. Well, the reason I bring it up is because we did detect a runabout attempt to transport onto the planet, but... Uh, they sort of left in a hurry after the transport. We never saw any Federation officers, though. At least until you came. Are you sure that it was a Federation ship that was trying to transport to the planet? Uh, yeah, had all the standard markings of a runabout. Do, uh, do the people here have, uh, sufficient weapons to protect against the Jem'Hadar if they are to return. Well, that would depend on how many Jem'Hadar we're talking about here. You know, maybe a small strike team we could handle, but uh, any anything major, I guess it really depends on whether the Jem'Hadar use their shroud. Hey, Captain, you mentioned a recent attack by the Jem'Hadar. Do you have any injured... We do have a few with uh, plasma burning, but uh, for the most part, we weathered that storm quite well. Well, I'm a doctor and would be happy to offer up my services if you so require them. And he actually smiles at that and says, you know, we, uh, we've been without a doctor for quite a while. Uh, I'm sure we would be happy for your assistance. And I'll lean into Talek and kind of whisper, Commander, I'm a little skeptical here. The captain said they were able to weather a Jemadar attack. Uh, from what I've read, Jemadar weapons tend to be very lethal. They have an anticoagulant so that um, normal blood clotting does not uh, happen without uh, medical assistance. That they were able to weather a Jemadar attack so easily is a little suspicious. Well... Uh, examine the people who are injured, and we can see what sort of weapons might be caused by that. If they have a Federation runabout, then they have Federation weapons. So they might have used those rather than their own. We don't know. Indeed. I'll let you know if anything sticks out. We're going to cut back to the exterior of the I-13 and we see the I-13 making all best possible speed uh, away from the Jem'Hadar attack ship. Uh, however, the attack ship is gaining speed on you. You're not in combat quite yet, but it's very likely unless you do something to change the situation. Captain, if I may suggest, we can drop our shields momentarily and transport the Clarkson survivors on board. At that point, we might be able to loose the tractor beam and use the Clarkson as an improvised explosive to catch the Jemadar off guard. Commander Holton, do you believe that that's a... Uh... What do you think the odds of that succeeding are? Mm, based on what I'm seeing here, sir, it's... Maybe about a 30% chance that the Jemadar attack ship would be reckless enough to ignore an exploding runabout though uh frankly sir uh, we can use all the runabouts we can get in this war it would be a shame to lose one in such a fashion commander Saval, do you think we could cut the tractor beam and turn and fight this attack ship it is possible captain however we are missing several key members of the crew and Commander Telek's expertise in engineering will be sorely felt. Do you think we can outrun the attack ship? Unfortunately not. I think we stand and fight. Very good, Captain. So we'll move into initiative order here. And I'll give the uh, Clarkson a turn as well. 
Uh, yeah, I-13, you have first go. And so that uh, GM Josh and Nick have uh, characters to play, uh, why don't one of you take over uh, Holton? And uh, as much of a joke as I make this, uh, why don't, uh, why doesn't uh, Martinez take over engineering type things? I'll take Martinez. Okay. So Doesn't even uh, have a first name. <laughs> and he's just Martinez. <laughs> Just one name. Oh. Martinez is very strong and powerful. He only needs one name. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. So uh, the first round or the first uh, turn does go to the I-13. So what would you like to do? Uh, as a reminder, your shields are up. You have a tractor beam on the runabout. And the runabout has about 30 minutes of life support remaining. Is this... Uh... Is this considered long range? Uh, you know, it might help if I put the dot guides and stuff here. Um, let me grab that real quick. Uh, yeah, where is that? I thought I had this on this map. One moment. Have to look for it in my asset folder. Um, there it is. All right. So, uh, one to two units is close range. Uh, 2 to 6 is medium, 7 to 10 is long, anything beyond 11 is extreme. So it is ex it's extreme range. Mm -hmm. I wonder is if we want... Sir, go ahead. Is releasing the tractor beam a free action? Yes, it would be a free action to simply turn off the tractor beam. I think that's... we do that first. Okay. No point in maneuvering in combat with the, the clerks and weighing us down. What was your suggestion? Um, I was going to suggest a rally action on your part. Let them, let us build up some momentum, have them close, and then we can attack with the extra momentum pool. But I don't know. I, the only worry is that they shoot first at the... Um, no, we can go two in a row, right? Um, do you have quick to action? I do, yes. Then, yeah, you can act back to back. Uh, yeah, so I think that's a good idea. Um, so I, I will uh, I will attempt to rally. Okay. I believe that is a uh, presence command difficulty of zero. And can I, can I have a focus in uh, persuasion? I'm persuading the crew to do their jobs. Sure, why not? I love it. Oh, look at that. That is uh, four <laughs> momentum for you. Very nice. You are a cap. So, Captain, you give a uh, motivating speech of sorts and uh you know prepare the entire crew for potential combat with the gem hadar lives are on the line people so uh using quick to action uh who would like to go next saval would you like to or if not, I could take Martinez. Unfortunately, uh, we're out of weapons range at this point, so... I think the the um, Commander Holton should... Um, what is it called? Um, no, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. The um, evasive action. I would say you could do evasive action. Uh, something I should also say, just for sake of clarity, you don't have to go back to back here. You can take, you, you know, you can let the gem hadar go, and then you would take your next turn, and then you could quick to action. It doesn't have to be done now. Yeah, I, th I think that might be the best. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Then the gem hadar attack ship is going to go, and it is going to attempt to use its warp to jump a very quick 
uh, distance between you all. Uh, where is... I know I have them here somewhere. Yes, here they are. Let's see how they do. All right. Uh, I was only looking for the one success there. So yes, so the Jem'Hadar uh, do spend some power. I believe it is two power for this. Uh, the Jem'Hadar attack ship, the nacelles of it glow for a moment. And then almost like the quote-unquote Picard maneuver, there's an instance where it's in two places at once. And it has closed to medium range. Actually, I think that's close range. Let me quickly check here. Yeah, that's close range. So they have jumped to close range. And I'll spend some threat so that they can go immediately. And you probably know what's coming. Here come some disruptor cannons. Oh, dear. All right. So let's break this down. So, oh god, those are all effects. Okay, this could be a problem, but again, let's break it down. Uh, that is... Yeah, that's four successes. That's insane. Uh, Alright, so that is eight before Vicious one. So that's nine, ten, eleven... Oh, I lost count. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I see fourteen damage from that Disruptor Cannon. Uh, so you have, what, a resistance of five? Yeah. So you would take nine damage to your shields, which is a breach. All right, At well, let's, uh, roll let's roll to see where your, your, uh, your hit is. Oh, dear. So, uh, as the cannons of the Jaminar attack ship, uh, begin to vomit... Uh, deadly fire, it tears through the shields of the I-13 and knocks your weapons offline. And uh, just so you know that until you spend a minor action to fix that, that you cannot do anything with the weapon system. But uh, that is all the Geminar can do. So we return to the I-13. What would you like to do? Uh, down from engineering, you get a frantic call on the communication, uh, Captain. Captain, this is Mr. Martinez. I'm sorry, Captain, but shields are nearly downed. What's going on out there? Because apparently a guy named Martinez has an Irish accent. I love it. <laughs> oh. You can't hear it because I'm on push to talk, but I'm dying over here. I'll be back in like um, 30 seconds. <laughs> Just need a little bit of a break. <laughs> I break the lights. Okay, you serious now? So I guess we're not attacking this turn. Well, you well, could. I, you you could just have to minor. spend. Yeah, you would have to spend the minor to fix yeah. it. So you can do a minor action and still fire. Correct. Yes. Um. What we could do is, I guess, either scan for weaknesses and then fire, or fire twice. Unless you want to repair. Um, what are the odds that we kill it in one shot? I don't right? think very right. good. I mean, with an amazing torpedo shot, you could disable it. Also, yeah, before, oh, before it torpedoes would be really difficult because it's close range. Mm -hmm. Also, we could target its engines to try to knock out its power. I think it would be better for us to shoot it twice. We have six momentum, so we can... We can use that. If we have to use a determination, we could do that. I think that's a better, um, better way to go. Yeah, I think we should shoot twice. And okay. if that doesn't work, then whatever. We just I fourteen. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, you know we I fourteen over. isn't the goal, guys. That's not the goal of this session. <laughs> just remember that. Well, we'll see where the dice fall. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you want to fire twice, we'll do one at a time. Um, so minor action to clear the uh, problem with the weapons array. Then your actual action is to fire, and of course that is a control security, assisted by the ship's weapon security, 
Because you are at close range and not medium range, it's a difficulty of three to fire phasers. And if you want to fire torpedoes, that's a difficulty of four, plus I get some threat. So what I'd like to do is fire phasers targeting their engines. Okay, that would raise the difficulty to a four, because you are targeting a specific system. Yeah. Um, and then I have precision targeting, which allows me to reroll one die, and I have piercing one on that. Okay. And what I'd like to do is buy two dice for three momentum to roll four. Okay. And applicable focus. Yeah, shipboard tactical, of course. So right. I get to reroll that one die. And I have the ship ready. Control security. Applicable focus. Yeah, just barely get it. Yeah, four successes, which is what you need. So go ahead and roll me some damage. Sorry, that's uh, six challenge dice? For the I-13, I believe so, yes. All right, so that is currently... Two, uh, getting rid of, you said you had piercing one, getting rid of two resistance. So one momentum to reroll those four zeros. Okay. A little bit better. You're now doing five, ignoring three resistance. Uh, that is enough. Yeah, that is enough for a breach. So you uh, you fire back with your phasers. And sure enough, uh, what happens is you're able to hit the starboard nacelle, and in the process, they uh, the power across the Gemini attack ship flickers. Um, it comes back, but you probably can tell based on your scans that it doesn't have very much power remaining. Now the question is, do you use your quick to action here, or...? Uh, the difficulty, cool. the base difficulty would go up to what a, uh, a four for me if I was to attack again, though. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So it would become a difficulty of four if you were aiming at a specific system. It would be a difficulty of five. <sighs> I guess the other thing is we could use quick to action to try to restore some of our shields. That is an option. What do we think? I would go with restoring some of our shields. I've got Martinez's uh, sheet open. He's actually not bad at that if it's control engineering. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so that's going to be a control engineering difficulty of one. Costs one power. Uh, the ship will assist you with a structure engineering. I'll grab that. I think I'm just going to roll straight, and then we can spend our momentum to add extra, yeah, to the shields. Okay. Uh, he has no focuses, though. Hmm. Well, this is an activation. You could give him some. Well, he I'm should have say... three. Does he not even have three? Oh, he does. Transporters, replicators, EPS power systems, or computers? Okay. Uh... EPS power systems sounds like it applies. You're restoring power. Yeah, I would say power systems is is relevant here. All right, so no help from the I-13. Three successes, Three so you successes. get two momentum. So you immediately restore two shields, so you're at a total of three. And you can spend one momentum, repeatable, for two shields each. Tell me how much to spend. I think we want shields. I think, I think we, we spend... If we spend we two spend... momentum, we're at nine shields. Mm -hmm. I think we do that. I'm giving you all she's got, Captain. I'm sorry. Without Teleki, I don't know what to do. I'm normally at the transporter. You're doing a terrific job, Martinez. Keep it up. Small pointer order, I think you'd be at seven, not nine. But yeah. 
Uh, that is going to be your guys' turn. It's going to go over to the Jem'Hadar attack ship. They, of course, have to spend their miner to uh, get the engines working again. And then they are... What would they do? I mean, they're Jem'Hadar. They're very straightforward. I think they would just attempt to fire again, even if it's more difficult. Uh, so let's see what happens. Uh, I will give them... I'll give them one additional die uh, with threat. And they get it. Okay. So, uh, was it nine? Uh, you were at one shields. I think that's the thing is you were at one shields, not, uh, oh, not at three oh. shields. Oops. Yeah. No, I appreciate you uh, doing the math on that because I, I want to make sure it's fair. All right. So bad news. They got enough successes again. Uh, the good news is that they're only doing eight damage. And the question is, how evil do I want to be? Because I have threat. I don't know. How evil you guys want me to be? It's war. As evil as the Gemadar. Well, if we're doing as evil as the Gemadar, then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one threat to re-roll those four zeros. All right, so we're up to 10, 11, 12, 13 damage. And I will spend one more threat for piercing to ignore two of your resistance. So you're going to take 10 damage here, um, which is not good for you because that not only breaches because it's five or more, but your shields are down as well. So that's two breaches here. Let's see what happens. So, uh, first system hit is to structure. We'll roll that in a moment. Uh, second hit. Okay. You have two breaches to structure, which I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, puts you at damaged. Let me look that up real quick. Also, I love that we joked about I-14, and now it might actually happen. Uh, da, 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 da. I've got it here if you want me to read it. If, yeah, uh, go for it. The system has been significantly damaged. The vessel suffers fires and or minor hull breaches, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's more problematic to reach parts of the ship, increasing the complication range of all engineering tasks to repair systems by two. Also reduces the ship's resistance by one. Difficulty to repair this is three. So not that bad. But not, not that great. bad, but you do get knocked down to four resistance. Okay, that could be important. Uh, but now we have to roll those structure hits, because every time we do a structure hit, uh, if I roll an effect, it means one of the characters gets injured. And of course I roll two effects. Of course. Of course. All right. I'd like to offer up Martinez as tribute. I mean, let's do this fair. As much as I would love to take tribute, let's do this fair. Uh, I'm going to roll a d4. And then I'll roll a d3. Uh, of course, uh, let's actually do the numbers here. So if it's a 1, it hits the captain. If it's 2, it hits Saval. If it's 3, uh, it will hit Holton. If it's 4, it will hit Martinez. And then the d3 will be whoever doesn't get hit by this. Uh, so let's see. 1d4. Uh, I believe that is Martinez. <laughs> so... Martinez, you're down Martinez, in engineering. You... You're doing your best to uh, get things back up and running, but the hit from this one is so powerful that the console you're working at literally blows out. And, of course, as the standard Star Trek thing where rocks and sparks just send you to the ground unconscious. So that's a problem. And then we're rolling a D3. Oh, dear. The captain. Uh, what happens is your chair... Uh, as sparks begin to emit from the bridge consoles, your chair, the deck plates underneath it, literally buckle and send you on a miniature sort of hop into the air. And when you come back down, you hit your head in such a way that you, too, also go unconscious. Okay. Fun. But uh, right. at this point, uh, I believe the only person who has yet to act is Holton. So what is Holton going to do with all this? Of 
Go to Ryzen. Um, what do you want to do? Go to Ryzen. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea. I think we got to run. Yeah, let's run. I would just remind you, you do have the Clarkson out there right now. I know, and there are people on the Clarkson. What but it's better than all of us dying. What position is Holton at right now? Uh, she's at the... the uh, she's technically at Helm, but she is first officer, so she could be uh, at any station. Can she... I guess with me going down, can she give command actions? Yeah. She could take over command. In fact, I think she does take over command when you go down. So could she... She could direct... Um, so Val to fire again. She could. Which would mean she would assist. And we could just go for it. We're not going to be scared. We're going to be brave. Okay. This is a, I don't get to make this choice. You I'm in don't dreamland. get to make that choice, but I do get to take your advice. <laughs> the captain is drinking, uh, the captain is coming to me in like the conscious con a voice in my head of the captain is telling me to direct Saval to shoot again. All right. I so, captain. So Saval, uh, you know the drill. Uh we'll control security, assisted by the ship's weapon security. Uh difficulty of four to hit here. And uh the acting captain. Holton can assist with a presence command. And is it difficulty four if I don't uh, target a system? Correct. If you do target a specific system, it would go to five. Okay. Um, I am going to... What do you think? Should I tap a value and try to target their engines again? Yes. What scale is an attack ship. I don't know if that's something a player should know. I mean, by now you would know. They're they're a scale 3. They're the same size as you, more or less. So if we just do two more breaches to them, they're disabled. Yep. That would be one breach with a torpedo with, because of high yield, but that would also give him threat. And it'd be a lot harder. Yeah, it would be a difficulty of five to hit with a torpedo. But if we knock their shields out and cause a breach, that would be two breaches that would disable them? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Wait, uh, are their shields even up still? They are. Okay. So what I think I'll do is I won't target a system, but I will tap a value. A proportional response only invites escalation. Mm -hmm. So I want to completely knock them out of the fight. And I'll spend the, just the two momentum to roll three dice. Okay. While using augmented ability control. Okay. Are you going for phasers or torpedoes? Uh, I think I'll be going for... What do you think, guys? I think phasers. Let's go phasers. Okay. Then phasers. That is uh, already... That is six successes. Five, six, yeah. Uh, one, two, three, seven with augmented ability control. Uh, actually, eight, I think, because the I 13 got a success too. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's going to be uh, eight successes, which means you get four momentum. Yeah, go ahead for all the beans. Let's, uh, let's see what you roll on your damage here. Do you, do you spend extra power to do extra damage before you roll? Uh, yes, you would have had to declare that before the roll. Um, but, uh, with four, uh, you're dealing four at the moment. Uh, no resistance. Oh, wait, you still have, well, you don't have persistent targeting coming into effect here. That's right. Not, not targeting a specific thing. Okay. So what I'd like to do then is spend two momentum to remove all of the resistance. Okay. And one more momentum to get the five damage I need for a breach. Okay. 
So uh, what's going to happen is you return fire uh, best you can and hit the Jem'Hadar attack ship. And you do cause a breach. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell me, uh, go ahead and roll that system hit. We'll see where you get the uh, the breach. Oh, and yes, uh, spread for the uh, phasers, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, we would have had that on the first one, maybe, right? I included Too it. Too late. Oh, okay. Two computers. Very nice. So, uh, what happens is... Mm, excuse me. Uh, what happens is you actually knock out their shields completely. Um, but the act of losing shields uh, more or less disables them as they sort of begin to drift lazily off to the side. And you guys are technically out of combat right now. Captain, request permission to destroy the vessel. You hear no reply. I am referring to Acting Captain Holton, who will be the new captain when you die, but... <laughs> you have permission. I don't know. Uh, Do right. it! I that would just... Uh, you see phasers lance out from the uh, phaser strips along the, uh, the hull of the I-13, and I just obliterate that uh, disabled Jemadar vessel. All right. So, uh, it is at this point that uh, injury reports and casualty reports are coming in. Um, but, uh, Holton, uh, you're looking at the captain. They're going to need a surgeon for this one. And the only surgeon you know of is currently on a planet talking with would-be Maquis. But speaking okay. of... Speaking well, of... we need to bring the captain down to Sigbay at least, so that he is not laying in the middle of the bridge might help and then we need to head back over but we still have the clarkson to deal with mm -hmm. at this point you could easily beam over the people from the clarkson though so or you could take it into a shuttle bay either would work i think we'll just take it into a shuttle bay that'll be fine okay so we'll come back to that in a moment we're going to go back to the away team and uh the away team uh, what you're seeing and what you've experienced is that this is pretty much like any other, you know, Federation Frontier World. You know, they have a bit of a culture here. They are actually rather nice. Like, even though there's some actual Maquis among their ranks, like, you maybe only get a dirty look here and there, but it's not like open hostility. And what maybe sticks out to all of you is that uh, most people are for lack of a better term, very excited that Mr. Idru is here. Um, they are, for clarity's sake, uh, for Idru at least, they don't appear to have had a doctor of your caliber in quite some time. So you're treating injuries that were previously thought untreatable. You know, you're basically being a miracle worker, and you're getting a lot of positive feedback for that. It's a Doc Hollywood situation. Perfect. Mm-hmm. But uh, as you patch up a uh, young teenager, uh, and he, you know, says, Thanks, Doc. I was uh, worried I'd have to lose the arm. Well, I'm glad to help. I can't imagine losing your arm for something this minor. That's that's kind of crazy. Yeah, well, I uh... Think what would... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I think what Idri was trying to gleam as he's working his way through and helping people is also checking up to see if the injuries that people have are matching what he knows about Jim and our weaponry or potentially Starfleet weapons because Telek did raise the issue that it could be phasers that they captured instead. He's really just trying to check their story as well as helping people. Right, right, right. Uh, roll me a Insight Medicine difficulty of two. Focus in biology? I'll let it happen. Two successes is all you need. Actually, yeah. Uh, the theory that the Jem'Hadar were using uh, Federation weapons, probably right on the mark because you're seeing uh, injury-wise that these are all the types of injuries that could be caused by a phaser of variable setting.
Well, Edge will continue to work his way through the injured. And then mostly asking questions to from folks. Why are they still on this planet when they can leave and go somewhere safer? Is the question he will pretty much ask everyone. Most of what you get back is that they would like to leave, but they just don't have a ship that can take all of them. Um, and those that want to stay are like, yeah, we just sort of like the frontier life kind of a thing. But yeah, the main impe uh, impediment to or impediment uh, to leaving is the fact that they don't have a working ship of capacity. I guess after a while, after helping people, Idril will make his way back to Telek and report. Uh, Commander, it seems to check what your theory that the Jim'Hadar may have gotten a hold of some Federation weapons. The injuries I'm seeing are consistent to uh, Federation or Starfleet-style phasers. Well, that's good news and bad news, because that means they have a bunch of Starfleet weapons, but at least they are not using their more vicious weapons these people um hopefully the captain will be back pretty soon and we can see about getting in contact with them to get some ships out here to get these people out my theory is that perhaps these jimadar are also stranded here which is why they're using starfleet weapons uh, and if that's the case at some point they're going to run out of ketracel white No, it's not exactly a popular opinion amongst the crew, especially of the I-13, but capturing these Jim Hadar, they could make uh, valuable prisoners. We can see what the captain says. Yes, That's I... obviously something that I can't make a decision on about myself. Yes, Doctor, without put... Unless we put some of these people in harm's way, I, I think capturing a... Uh group of Jemadar soldiers might be beyond our capabilities. Uh, I, mean, I mean, if I may, we do have a shuttlecraft. I mean, we could fairly easily round them up or just, like, blow them off the surface of the planet just and throwing that out there. You might have missed that the doctor said capture. Yeah, but yeah, I my mean... My concern with capturing them is we don't have anywhere to put them right now. Even on the I-13, we don't really have a good place to put them. So that would have to be something that the captain figures out where we will store any prisoners of war if we take prisoners of war. It's just, I think we should try to hold things down here, find out what information we can about these people, maybe get a list of who wants to go, who doesn't want to go, just get everything in order and keep an ear out for the I-13. And uh, speaking of the I-13, uh, Telek, you get a chirp on your communicator. This is Commander Telek. And uh, you were maybe expecting the captain, but instead you get Holton. And Holton says, All right, Telek, uh, what's the status down there? I'm hoping you fared better than we have up here. Well, that's not good to hear. Um... We are currently in the middle of a settlement. We are taking care of some injuries that some of them have sustained. There are Jem'Hadar on the planet somewhere, but not around here. These people would like to return to the Federation. There's about 130-odd people who want to return. So if you can get the captain's point of view on whether or not we should try to take them or contact any more ships to come pick them up that'd be great the captain is currently down in fact we're in dire need of mr idrew's services uh the captain is going to need some surgical wonder to keep them alive at this point you said there were how many that wish to leave the planet over 130 that's not good. Uh, we took a lot of hits up here to our structure. Uh, we maybe have room for 60, including the I-13 crew, but anything else we would have to put in at Stardock to get rid of those massive breaches in our hull. By the way, we do need Idru up here as soon as possible. 
Of course, we'll send him right away. Do you need us back up, or should we wait down here? Uh, that is entirely your discretion. Uh, what do you feel is best, Commander? I think I'll have the rest of us stay down here, and we can hopefully protect this uh, settlement in case the Jem'Hadar come back. They were not too far from here, so... For that. And uh, since Mr. Idru doesn't appear to be wearing his comm badge, please tell him to be ready for transport. Can do. Idru, are you ready to go back up? I suppose I... When I made this statement about the I-13 needing a coroner, I didn't imagine it was going to be a prophetic statement. But I think yeah, I well, hopefully here that I can. it isn't prophetic. You must feel like a real jerk right now. Yeah, I mean, why would you jinx us, Doc? Indeed. All right. So uh, we are going to cut to sickbay where uh, Mr. Idru... Uh, you more or less walk into your sick bay to see that it is filled. All the bio beds are filled with injured individuals. Uh, the two that are worst off are uh, Captain Shran and Mr. Martinez. Mr. Martinez doesn't have a token right now, but uh, he will very shortly. But yeah, Shran and Martinez are in uh, dire straits. As soon as, as Idri walks in sick bay, he says to the computer, Computer, activate the emergency medical hologram. And uh, I'm going to spend thread here that, uh, Idru, you hear the uh, hollow emitters activate and the sort of sputtering that it's trying to bring the EMHs to life. But then the computer makes an error noise and says, holographic emitters offline, unable to manifest EMH. We did take a breach to computers. That tracks. Well, I think Idru is going to quickly take a look at both Shran and Martinez uh, just to get a general, like maybe even looking at the readouts to see which one is in most critical condition. All right. That's going to be a reason medicine difficulty of one. Focus in emergency medicine. Yep. I'm just going to do a straight roll there. All right. You get uh, two momentum. I have bad news for you, Mr. Idru. Because you do not have another skilled doctor and the EMH is offline, you're only going to be able to save one of them. So it's either going to be Martinez or it's going to be the captain. Which patient has a more optimal outcome? Martinez looks to be the one with the more favorable outcome. Wow. Wow. Brad wants me to flip a coin, but it's your character. It's okay. I got other characters. How about, okay, since you said it, I'll roll a 150 to 100, I'll save the captain that gives. Okay. That's about fair. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh dear. And oh, he boy. is closer. Martinez is closer, less steps. All right. Well, we're going to try. Just because uh, ELH said that I can only save one doesn't mean that I can only save one. Maybe. Maybe I can save both. We're going we're to start with Martinez. Right. Maybe right. you generate so much, so much momentum saving Martinez that you can create like five different advantages. Maybe. I've still it's got possible. my determination. All right. So this is going to be a extended task, as you probably were, was uh, something you were expecting. Uh, so your work track is going to be a 12. Your magnitude is going to be a 3. And I'm typing all this out. Don't worry. Uh, the difficulty will start at a 4. And there will be uh, one resistance. And uh, Idru, I think for you, it would be a daring or a control plus medicine for this. Let's see, because we're starting at difficulty four. I think I'll do control. 
trying to think if it's best to just go heavy on the first roll and try to get as much momentum as possible. Because I don't want to miss... Um, do I have a um, an interval that I'm keeping track of? Yes, I knew I was forgetting something. Um, you have four intervals. And remember that uh, every attempt, unless you spend momentum, is two intervals. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. So basically, I cannot... I cannot fail a roll. He's got to get all of them. So yeah, I think he's going to tap his determination and trigger. Um, everything is a problem to be solved. It has okay. to be passed. And he's going to do that in medicine control. Let's see. That gives me. Um, I probably don't have time to actually use my mental repository, do I? No. Uh, but are you spending for additional dice and or to reduce the interval to one? Yeah, I will be. Okay. Because uh, we only have three dice. Or we have three momentum, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I can use all three of that momentum, guys, one to decrease the interval and then one to buy that fourth dice. Do it. Yep. Because it's difficulty four. I That's the only chance I'm going to have. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming my focus in uh, emergency medicine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's four successes exactly. Exactly. I had All right, seven challenge tie. Let's see how you do. Okay, not terrible. Uh, oh, geez. But I need one more. Well, I need two more because I've got one resistance mm -hmm. to actually get a uh, a breakthrough to lower that difficulty. Oy. You guys okay with me giving two threat? That's what's going to take. Well, he can only use it to sabotage you at this point because the session's almost <laughs> over, so hey. <laughs> that's, true. that's true. I think that's what I got to do. So that's, uh, yeah, that's enough for t one breakthrough and then five off the work track. All right. So uh, what I would say is that you do your damnedest to work on Martinez and you're making good progress. Um, but every single moment you spend on Martinez is another moment that Captain Shran is getting closer to death. So uh, you have me. That's sort of the, the downside of doing this on text over one of uh, GM Josh's pretty templates. Uh, so yeah, you have five work done on the work track. Your magnitude goes down to a two. Your difficulty is decreased to a three. You have uh, three intervals left before the patients expire. It's a question. Could I put Shran in stasis somehow? I would say if you give me two threat, yes, you could to create that advantage. That threat is pil piling up. Idru, even though he knows that he has kind of had to make this choice between both of them. His character isn't one that lets, like he's going to do everything he can to save Shran, uh, short of sacrificing Martinez. So I think he's going to do that. I think he's going to pay that cost, even though it's probably yeah. going to come back and bite him. But okay. you could always roll once. You could always roll again and then do that, right? Maybe well, what I would say, well, what I would say is that uh, if you do it before the roll, um, what'll happen is that Shran's intervals will freeze. Like, if you were to freeze Shran now, when we do Shran's extended task, that will freeze, and he will be at three intervals. Whereas if you do the roll first, assuming you spend to reduce the interval, it would be only two intervals for Shran. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I know that's, like, it's going to come back inviting, but he's going to try to save both. All right. Well, uh, still an extended task, so go ahead and uh, another controller daring plus medicine. It's difficulty of three. I think at this point, I, gosh, I'm out of, out of momentum and I've used my determination. Gosh. Um, I guess it's just one threat for an extra dice, which I think I kind of have to for difficulty of three. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to do. One more threat. Hey. Three successes. Yeah, go ahead and roll me those seven challenge die. Very important roll here. 
Hey, seven. All right. So yeah, that would be enough for completion if you were to give me two threat to uh, get rid of the res or one threat to get rid of the resistance. I think he's going to do it. All right. So good news. You have stabilized Martinez. He's still in critical condition, but he's not in danger of expiration. However, with uh, all the lovely threat you've given me, as you turn to the captain, we are actually going to do uh, what is essentially a gated task uh, rather than an extended task. Uh, we're still going to time it, though. Um, so he has three intervals remaining. And I tell you what, you gave me enough threat. I'm actually going to reduce that intervals to two remaining. So very important role coming here. In order to save the captain, you must first pass a daring and a medicine at a difficulty of five. And that'll give you enough to stabilize Shran to the point where he's not going to die immediately. So you would Ten. still need to do another task after that to get him out of the woods completely. But it is very difficult here. <laughs> Can Seagal assist? I don't think you want Seagal assisting. But <laughs> I mean... You can just punch the problem away. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm, what I'm... what would happen, though, to be on the, uh, the fair side of things, quote-unquote is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first officer, Holton, uh, first officer can, what is it, spend their determination to uh, give three moment? Let me see if I can find that real quick. I think if they have the talent, they can do that. Is that Spirit of Discovery? Uh, Might there be. is first officer ability, though. Yeah, that's what I'm looking up. Uh, let's see. Executive officer. Da, 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 da. When another character in communication with the executive officer spends a point of determination, the executive officer may spend three momentum immediate to let that character regain the the spent point of determination. So not, not what you were thinking. Not what I was thinking, no. But if you want to give me three threat, I can say that Idru still has the determination on the field. I mean, that's his only chance of getting this role. He needs at least one determination roll in the role. Like, I, yeah, maybe even two because he may have to reroll dice. What? I'm looking at my values. I think I've got one that might be able to challenge. So let me ask you, ELH. Uh, the rest of Sick Bay, our folks, does anyone need attention soon? I would say, based on your triage uh, capacity, that they will survive. They're not going to be happy about it, but they will survive. Could, if we left Shron, um frozen or in stasis, could we get him somewhere else? Like, does he need to be treated immediately? Again, I'm trying to decide how much of an evil GM I want to be. And it's okay if the answer to that is no, because I have a, I think I have a follow-up. Like, do we even have, like, this the full stasis facilities that, like, a a larger starship would have no and that's sort of the term. thing is that the i-13 sick bay isn't really advanced no. like if you had an advanced sick bay i would say yes but you don't have an advanced sick bay yeah i think my answer is gonna be you're gonna have to treat him immediately so no pressure of course yeah, I mean, I think the only way I can hit that difficulty of five is if I give him, like, a lot of threat. That's the that's really the only way. I, I he's got mental repository to lower the difficulty, but that would increase the interval, and don't I don't have an interval to to give. What are your values, by the way? 
Uh, they're all kind of positive, which is unfortunate. It's, I don't believe any form of sentient life is inferior to another. Everything is a problem to be solved. Life is life. And prime directive or not, my duty is to heal. So none of those could really be challenged because they kind of follow in the situation perfectly. Mm -hmm. He's not going against any of those. He's actually following them. Well, could this represent, and I don't want to like tell you how to play your character or anything. This is just an idea I had. Could this represent a shift in Dr. Idru's position regarding maybe the Prime Directive or Starfleet as a whole because well, he's actually listened to what Saval said at the beginning of the session. This is a, Both these men would have died without him. So there's that. Or maybe the, the Jemadar have nearly killed both these men that he's come to know and suddenly the value of a life is not, you know, a life is a life. That's a good one. Why don't I challenge that value of life is life? And he's going to start questioning if the lives of the Jemadar are actually at the same level as everyone else. Like if, if saving the Jemadar is worth sacrificing everyone else. That's a good one. Yeah, I like it. That's good because I was hoping Idru would have this moment of doubt and I think it's probably just hit him. Mm-hmm. But if I could offer that up yeah. to get a point of determination, that's where I'm going here. Um, so yeah, that still I would probably need to give you at least two threat to get that that fourth dice. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be the only way I make this happen. So I'm doing daring medicine. I'm assuming I still have a focus, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, three successes. Three so successes. Enough. So, do we have any way to get you another point of determination? You could give me the three threat, and we'll say that uh, Holton did give you your determination back, but I would need to have the three threat for it. I think uh, if we... you check the captain's pockets, he has a point of determination in there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if the captain was been... conscious, he could give you his <laughs> determination. But then you wouldn't need to use the captain's determination to save the captain. Also, Brad, just to be clear, I'm not trying to kill your character. I'm just trying to provide some drama. No, no, I'm totally cool with it. I like it. I think I think Idru would do everything possible, like beyond even what's reasonable to try to save the captain. So I think spending that threat would be on par with what he would try. All right. So... Very important reroll here. It's going to be, the, I'm assuming daring. those two zeros. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep that one success. It'd be great if one is a 20. Yeah. Well, now that you've said it. Hey, no. I don't think we've rolled what I needed. It's what you needed. So that is five successes. So what it happens is you're able to get him out of actively dying to now in what would be the ICU of a hospital. So he's, a step away from death, but he is still at death's door, if that makes any sense. And yeah, if, uh, I could offer up, if I could offer up some malicious way for you to use that threat, ELH. I, I have ideas, maybe, but go ahead. Maybe Idru cuts a corner to keep Shran away from death's door. Like he knows that he shouldn't do something, but there's a medical procedure that he takes that might be a little harmful for an Andorian long term, but he does that to keep Shran from dying. You know what? I like it. I'm just trying to think what would be good here. You cut off my antenna? Oh, there you go. Back. Yeah. Maybe maybe we can flavor this as this being like some form of uh, skull injury. And the only way for this to work out is, yeah, Shran losing his antenna. Because I think for an Andorian, sees... those antenna are pretty damn important. Yeah, I think it's like key to their balance. But yeah, maybe he sacrifices, like he sees that's something he should have treated, but he just ignored it in order to keep Shran alive. Yeah, I say we, uh, let's go with that. Also, uh, I looked it up. Uh, their antenna aid in balance and spatial awareness. A lost antenna can be debilitating until it regrows. So supposedly... Oh, they grow back. No big deal. But it will take time, and that's sort of the thing. Yeah, let's roll with that then. Then yeah, you, in order to save him, you have to cut a corner and you literally have to almost shave him bald. And well, to make a, a Delton comparison, you he has to be fully bald, which means no antenna. 
Yeah, and we see Idra do this procedure. He's also perhaps using some medical equipment in a way that it's not sanctioned by Starfleet, fully cutting all of the corners to keep Shran alive as much as he can. All right. But what I will do is I will spend threat not to make it more difficult for you, but at this point, you have done everything you can for Shran. You've bought him time, but you're going to need to get him to a starbase or somewhere with a more advanced sick bay. And Idra will go on the comm. This is sickbay to the bridge. This is a critical emergency. And I, I think, Saval, so you're in command right now because Holton is uh, somewhere not on the bridge for reasons that will become apparent. This is Acting Captain Saval. Yes, Doctor? Mr. Saval, we need the captain to be at a starbase with a sophisticated sickbay as soon as humanly possible. Uh, he's critically injured. I'm doing everything I can, but I'm not sure he's going to make it. Understood, Doctor. So all out. And then he would tap his comm badge and uh, contact Commander Holton. Commander Holton? Holton? Holton does not reply. However, Idru, you hear the door to sickbay open. And in steps Commander Holton. And they have on their person a Type 3 phaser. Commander, I just informed the bridge. I need to get... He doesn't even look up from Shran. He's still working. I, I need to get this ship to a medical facility immediately. I don't have time. If, if you have an injury, and I, I need you to try to take care of it yourself. And I'm going to say that with the same threat, because I have enough... I'm going to say that the complication is you have no idea that she is raising the phaser rifle and pointing it at you. So she's going to get a roll here. Uh, how much threat do I have remaining? I have four threat remaining. Let's give her one additional die. So she's going to be doing a control and a security. Difficulty of two with three dice. She does have a focus. That is two successes, which is what she needs. Oh, boy. All right. Apparently, you know, when I when I originally, you know, kitbashed this uh, adventure together, I uh, did not expect this to be as deadly, but uh, we'll roll with it. All right. So phaser type three is what? Uh, four plus security, I believe. Yes, four plus security. Wow. Maybe. All right. So seven challenge die for her. This could be a problem. Yeah. Do you Ouch. even have seven health? Let me ask that. I have eight. I have okay. eight. So, Idru, you're going to get an injury here as Holton literally shoots you almost point blank uh, with a phaser rifle. And you can still, like, speak. You're not, like, dead or unconscious, but you definitely go down hard to the ground. And up could on the I bridge... You... Oh, go ahead. Could I give you two threat to avoid that injury? Yeah, you could give me two threat to avoid the injury. No, don't I do know. that. He's just going to use that against me. Uh, you're useless in combat. Don't do it, man. Idru I'm, I'm is, kidding, of course. Idru is um, going to take the injury, and then he's going to quickly hit whatever he can to bring a force field up around the captain, not protecting himself and like blocking himself in front of, block, using himself to block uh, the captain from being shot. But his last probably action ever, he's going to try to bring up a force field. Okay. So uh, as you get the force field up uh, on the bridge, you do see that there was phaser fire in sickbay. This is Commander Savold, security. Report to sickbay immediately. I am on my way. All right. So what I will say is that Saval and security will arrive in two rounds. So Idru... First action, and I'll actually put a turn order up so we can keep track of this. So, Idru, uh, your first action, getting up the force field. Uh, that's going to be yeah. uh, simply a minor action, because I would imagine in sickbay that's something that is very easy to do. Uh, so yeah, that is your minor action. Force field here. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, he, is, he is completely useless in combat, I have to say. So... Uh... Emergency guess, transport. I guess I can try talking my way out of this. This isn't going to go well. 
Uh, maybe I'll duck behind. Oh, jeez, I guess I duck behind Martinez. Um, gosh, there's just nowhere for him to go, is there? Mm -mm. I guess I could take the recover action even without ducking for cover, right? It doesn't specifically say that you have to to be in cover. I would say that maybe you can get this uh, this console in between yourself and Holt. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. And I, I need to look it up. I don't think I've ever done recover before. I know it. In, yeah, uh, I know it does something. something. Let's, uh, let's see if we can find it real quick. Uh, da -da -da -da. Recover. The character ducks behind cover, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is a difficulty to fitness and command. And success means that the character gains one additional resistance for each effect rolled on cover die and regains their ability to avoid an injury. And you can regain two stress per momentum spent. He is terrible at this. Is there um, any way, because she's standing at the doorway, is mm -hmm. there any way to increase the gravity on the uh, hole plating at that point, or the, um, the grav plating where she's standing? Is that even possible? I mean, it is possible, but do you have time to do so? I'm going to say no. What about like a hypo spray? A hypo spray might work. But it would Maybe be since you, already, <laughs> since you already used your miner to put up the force field and move, you would have to give me one threat to get another miner to prepare a hypo. I think he's... His hand-to-hand -hand is going to be so pathetic. I don't think it's going to work. It's not going to do me good. So I think he's just going to duck behind the console, try to recover, and and then maybe the next time, the next turn, do something a little more heroic. But he's kind of out of options at this point. Fake right. a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. I'm doing uh, command fitness. Yep. Oh, this is going to be so sad. Uh, focus in... Um... Jeez, emergency medicine, because this is an emergency. If you had survival, I would have given you survival. Uh, it does not have survival. All right. What's the difficulty again? Sorry, it's difficulty Two. one. Two. Oh, boy. Um, this is bad. For him to survive, I'm going to have to give you one threat, because this is going to be a, such a terrible roll. Um, one threat, so I'm rolling three dice. All right. Yeah, oh, that's what I expected. Dear. <laughs> that's exactly what I expected. All right. So, uh, Idrew, you uh, you attempt to get behind that console and put it between yourself and Holton. And I think in the process, you know, you trip over yourself, maybe still feeling the effects of the phaser shot. And you actually tumble into the wall of your office uh, completely out of cover. And that is your turn, which means now Holton's going to act. And uh, Holton is going to walk over to the, uh, basically the force field control, and uh, sort of holding one fa the phaser rifle up on their onto their shoulder while their other hand goes to the pad. Um, they're going to attempt to uh, break through your uh, medical lockout, as it were. So Holton's going to be doing a daring security. Does not have a focus here. I will give them a third die. And let's see what happens. Uh, not enough. So they, uh, they get a chime or a, a negative beep. And they curse under their breath. But uh, that is their turn. So Idru, you have one more round to survive until security arrives. Is there a phaser nearby? It is sick bay. I don't know. You tell me, would Idru have an emergency phaser in sick bay? He would not have taken he wouldn't have taken steps to have one. Now, if there's one there by default, I don't know if he would have removed it, but he certainly would not have gone like to he wouldn't have taken measures to have one there. No. Let's do Did this then. All hide one in sick bay. That's the question now. Right. Let's do this. I will roll a 1d100. If it is 51 or higher, 
there is a phaser in sickbay. If I roll a 50 or lower, there is not. There is a phaser in sickbay. It is only a type 1, though. Well, I imagine it's using his miner. He's going to grab that phaser mm -hmm. um, if it's anywhere nearby. Let's say it's uh, underneath the console you tried to duck behind. Okay. Well, he's going to grab that phaser. And let's see. What's my security control? Okay, that's not terrible. I think he's not... Jeez. It'd be one threat to aim, right? One threat for the miner to aim, but I would also remind you that there is charge on a phaser. So if you gave me two momentum, you could both aim and charge, or two threat. I think I'm going to do that because he's, yeah, he, this has got to work. So he's going to do that. He's going to aim and charge. Alrighty. I love those little type one phasers. Uh, let's see, charge, I have to tell you what I'm going to use it for there, right? Yep. Uh, I'm going to use it for piercing because I'm I'm going to assume that uh, this person is probably a changeling. So Fair assumption. For piercing. I think the way that works is every effect yep. uh, does gets through one or two resistance. Two, if I recall. Or, well, it's piercing one, so it gets... You know what? I'll look it up just to be extra sure. Uh, let's see... I think I'm rolling, in the meantime, a security control. I believe the difficulty is two, right? Uh, difficulty of two, yes. Uh, it is piercing two, so yeah, every re every effect is uh, two resistance off. Cool. So I'm rolling two dice, and I think with aim I can reroll one of those. Mm -hmm. And I have no focus unless... Um... Research or surgery? I maybe know where to shoot this person. <laughs> Uh, nah, I can't give it to you. I'm sorry. And don't you have like a security of one? So I have a control of 10, though, so that's good. I can reroll that uh, at zero. So, all right, very important. Can you get below an 11? I you can. can indeed. Very nice. Thing is, though, my security score is one. So it's, am I rolling three challenge dice? Three challenge die, and I think in order for this to work, you either need to roll all twos or all effects. That is neither of those. I can give right. him a threat to re-roll the zero, but yeah, it has to be a two, so. Yeah. Security! So much threat. So much threat. I, I mean, you could give me a bunch of threat and... Basically, it's one point of damage for one threat. Well, what are you going to do with all that threat? He could just end the scene. Yeah, I could just end the scene is what could happen. Or he could just keep avoiding the injury that I'm trying to put to bring the character down. So it's like self-defeating at this point, I think, to keep giving him more threat. All right. Yeah. Man, this has turned into a nail biter. I, I didn't think we'd uh, be this tense, but I'm loving it. Uh, right hopefully, now, you guys are too. Idru is doing everything possible to try to save Sean. <laughs> All right. So, I think what happens is, uh, Idru, you fire with your type one. And, uh, oh, I just noticed the stream has been completely off. I apologize for that. Uh, you fire your type one at Holton, and it does hit her. But it doesn't seem to do anything. Like, her shoulder doesn't even glow where it's hit. And you probably, with that shot, can confirm that, yeah, she's probably not human. But, uh, for her turn, uh, she's going to round on you, Mr. Idru. And uh, is going to do two things, actually. Uh, the first thing she's going to do, and I'm spending the last of my threat to do this, um, she's going to shoot the door to literally weld the door together. And then she's going to point the same phaser rifle at you, Mr. Idru, and say, you know, part of my infiltration of this vessel, I didn't think I'd have to deal with a doctor like you. But uh, maybe it's for the best that uh, I end your little escapades here. And uh, with a devilish smile, she's going to attempt to shoot you. All right. So, for all the marbles, 
Is it a higher difficulty at least? Since she yes, it is a higher difficulty, and I don't have okay. enough of mo of threat to give her a third die, so she's just rolling it straight. She only gets one success, so the phaser rifle shoots the wall next to you. And it is at this point that I will put Saval on the map as you arrive at the top of round three. I think um, uh, Vron would also have respond to that. All right, let's get Vron on here. Vron's here as well. All right, so uh, which, which either one of you can act. It's just uh, let me know which it'll be. If it doesn't count as an action, like my round, I would probably order Lieutenant Vran to force the door, or order him to help me force the door. Yeah, I would say you could just do that. But yes, uh, as you are trying to get the door open, um, I need a fitness and security difficulty of two. Do you want uh, Vran to take the action and you assist? If I assisted, would I then be able to act as well, or...? If you give me a threat, yes. No, it, well, isn't it free with quick to action? This technically isn't the first round of combat, unfortunately. Oh, it's only the first round of... Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, let's do it. All right. So, uh, I will assist. Would infiltration... Apply. <laughs> I mean, in a roundabout way, it kind of does, yeah. Uh, all right. And it's fitness security? Yep. Security. How many successes do we need? Just two. And there's the two you Come need. On. So, uh, yes, you are able, even with the uh, spot welding that Holton di did uh, between Saval and Vran, you force the door open and see the scene unfolding before you. Saval, what is your action? I'm going to try to sell you on something here. Um, mm -hmm. Could I have read some kind of psychological profile from a Starfleet intelligence report on Commander Holton that mm -hmm. would give me some indication as to how she would move in combat? And with that knowledge, it would create an advantage that lowers the difficulty of my attempt to shoot her in the next second? I'll allow it. Okay. So then I'll give you one threat to aim. Mm -hmm. And why not? Another threat to apply piercing Okay. to my phaser two shot. Uh, of course, that would come after... Uh... Yeah. After the roll, yeah. So... 2d20, and I'll use Deadeye Marksman and Augmented Ability Control. Set up to succeed here. Focus. That is three successes, which means you get two momentum. Okay. So, seven challenge dice, I believe? Yep. Well, uh, no, type two would be uh, three, so eight challenge die. Oh. Well, Mr. Saval, how do you want to do this? Uh, well, as soon as the door opens, Saval forces his way in, and holding the door open, he'll point his phaser, seeing that uh, she has just fired a shot at Dr. Idru, and I will... I should have said this earlier on, but I'll, I'll shoot to kill. All right. Well, Idru, you're experiencing deja vu as another changeling is evaporated on the spot in front of you. Uh, this time, though, instead of uh, flailing or otherwise uh, trying to resist the shot, uh, Holton just kind of evaporates or gets thanos to borrow a term. But yeah, we're out of combat. And Iju immediately runs over to the captain. And lowers the force field and then goes back to check on his condition. 
Good news is that the captain's condition has not changed. Like, well, you still need to get him to a good sick bay or a star base, but uh, he'll live. Hopefully. Also, Are I think you, you all deleted right, yourself. There we go. I, you back on there. I'm, I, I'm, I don't know. We need to get the captain to sick bay immediately. I'm sorry. I mean, a, a starbase sick bay. Uh, we need to get the captain to a starbase. Yes, doctor. Apparently, uh, you also require the services of sick bay. Uh, Lieutenant Vran, do you have any emergency medical training? Just, just the basics from Starfleet Academy. Hmm. It is unfortunate we do not have another capable doctor. Nonetheless, um, have you have you tried the uh, what as they say uh, emergency medical hologram? I believe the uh, the system is down. I tried it earlier. Oh, that makes sense. Question. No, but I, I will be. I will be fine. Uh, the most pressing concern right now is the captain. Hmm. Question for you, GM. Uh, Commander mm -hmm. Telek, Tori, and the Bodhi—they're still down on uh, the surface of the planet, or have they returned? Uh, that is entirely up to Telek's call. I think we oh, would have come back once they said that they would have needed us aboard. So our friend case, couldn't have been there. Uh, we'll say that sake of argument that you came <laughs> up, like you Good. came up as a group, rather than uh, Idru beaming up to the ship. Let's play it that way. So yeah, Vran could be there. Doctor, I'm afraid that if we depart now, we would be leaving all the inhabitants of this planet to die at the hands of the Jem'Hadar. I just, and he's, so of all you can clearly tell that Idru's in shock. He says, I, I don't know um, what to do about them, but the captain, he he needs immediate attention. This is the most I can do for him. He's he's not going to make it unless we get him to a sick bay that has better facilities, not to mention all the other people that are injured. I see. Commander Saval to Commander Telek. Yes. How quickly can you begin to beam at least some of the individuals who wish to leave the planet up to the I-13? I mean, I'm not as good at the transporter as Martinez, but I can get some of them up in maybe about 20 minutes. I can get everybody up and settled. I don't know how many people we're going to be able to take with us, though. There's please, a lot of room please. on the ship we can't use. Please liaise with the uh, individual that you met on the surface and arrange to have as many people beamed aboard as possible. We are departing in 25 minutes. I'm actually going to spend the threat that you gave me. If you don't leave right now, Captain ain't going to make it. Commander Saval to Ensign Tori. And uh, Tori would respond, uh, uh, yeah, sir, what, what is it? Set course for the nearest star base at maximum warp. And then he would contact Commander Telek. Commander Telek, are you in engineering? Yes, I am. I need you to restore as much power as possible. We're going to need it to uh, bring the ship to maximum warp. Can do. Good. All right. So now our we'll final, to do that. yeah, I was saying, so our final scene uh, as we bring this session to a close is the I thirteen uh, turning away from the planet, abandoning the people there, and jumping to maximum warp to the nearest starbase. But yeah, that's where uh, this episode's gonna come to a close. Uh, what did you guys think? Yeah, it was fun. That was harsh. That, uh, Just because that took we some were turns. off doesn't mean that you need to attack us that hard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, the dice just, you guys were rolling really well, and then you just stopped rolling really well, and that sort of, I started rolling really well. So, 
I don't know. I, don't I think thought it made for good drama, though. My only question yeah. is, Brad, did you say something to ELH that uh, perhaps they didn't like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was nothing like that. Um, what happened was, is again, we saw where the dice fell. Um, so to sort of peel back the screen a bit, because all this is going to come out in the next opening log. Um, but basically what the whole premise was, was Holton was deliberately trying to get the caption captain injured in line of duty so that she could then take over and then you would have had a changeling at the head of the i-13 um so because i think this was the first time the captain actually went down from an injury um to the point where he needed to go to sick bay so it just worked out that this was the time when holton would make her move as it were and now she did now she's a likely story But yeah, um, it also was kind of ironic because, you know, this was a very, you know, challenging session for Idru. Like, I, I would imagine he's got a lot of things to question. Yeah, I think he's going to he's gonna have to see a counselor, which is the running joke with games that I'm in with the LH. Either I'm running them or he's running, a, he's running mine as our characters always go to a counselor. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Fenrir? Everyone, <laughs> we have group therapy sessions. <laughs> no, but it's good. I, I was hoping that... It's good it's going to bring Idru down a peg. He kind of needs to lose a little bit of that arrogance. So I think this will help him a lot. Cool, cool. All right, this is where I'm going to end the recording. Uh, so YouTube, thanks so much for tuning in. You'll see these lovely people in a few weeks. Bye, stream.